Welcome to vSkills, YouTube channel. In this video, you will learn about the top interview questions for, fixed income. So, let's get started. Question number 1, what is yield to maturity? The answer is, yield to maturity is the net profit or return of a bond. It is calculated after adjusting face value and interest payments from the amount on maturity. Question number 2, what are non-convertible debentures, NCDs? The answer is, they are debt instruments with a fixed tenure issued by companies to raise money for business purposes. Unlike convertible debentures, NCDs are non-convertible into equity shares of the issuing company at a future date. Question number 3, what is a term bond? The answer is, a term bond refers to a bond that matures on a single, specific date in the future. At the time, the bond's face value, that is, the principal amount, must be repaid to the bondholder. The term of the bond is the amount of time between the bond's issuance and its maturity. Question number 4. The benefit under Section 80 CCF can be availed up to what maximum amount? The answer is, under Section 80 CCF of the Income Tax Act, 1961, the maximum benefit to an investor shall be 20000 Question number 5. How should the interest on infrastructure bonds be treated? The answer is. The interest received on these bonds shall be adjusted as an income from any other source and shall form part of the total income of the assessee in that financial year in which they are received. Question number 6. How NCDs can be purchased? The answer is. For a specified period of time, public issues of NCDs will be commenced by the companies. After that, the NCDs are listed on the stock exchange. Investors who are interested in investing in the NCDs can purchase the NCDs from the open market through registered brokers. Question number 7. Who can offer long-term infrastructure bonds? The answer is. Usually, entities such as LIC, IDFC, IFC and other NBFCs that are classified as infrastructure finance companies by RBI are allowed to issue these long-term infrastructure bonds. Question number 8. If the same tax benefit is being offered then is there any benefit of investing in tax-saving infrastructure bonds? The answer is. Under Section 80 CCF of the Income Tax Act, investment up to 20000 in these bonds is eligible for an income tax deduction. This is over and above the 100000 deduction available under Section 80 C. These are long-term secured bonds that mature in 10 to 15 years. Question number 9. What do you understand by straights? The answer is. Bonds and fixed income mean the same thing. Most bonds are straight having a fixed interest payment every year called a coupon and a repayment date called a maturity date. Bonds that are not straight include floating rate notes with interest payment that changes periodically often linked to an index. Question number 10. Can a fixed deposit be redeemed before the original term? The answer is. Yes, before the original term of the FD, it can be closed. Interest will be paid at the rate applicable on the date of deposit, in the event of the fixed deposit being closed before completing the original term of the deposit, for the period for which the deposit has remained with the bank only. In case of premature withdrawal, the deposit may be subject to the penal rate of interest as prescribed by the bank on the date of deposit. Question number 11, which is typically higher the cost of debt or the cost of equity? The answer is. As per the analysis, the cost of equity is always higher than the cost of debt because the cost associated with borrowing debt is tax deductible. Moreover, equity investors are not guaranteed to get fixed payments, unlike lenders. Debt is less expensive as its interest payment is considered as an expense. In a firm's capital structure, debt is also given preference. So, in the situation of liquidation or bankruptcy, before the equity holders, the debt holders get paid their funds first. Question number 12. What is a deferred tax asset? The answer is. A deferred tax asset is created when any business pays more tax to the Indian Revenue Service than that is reported on their income statement. It is created from the net operating losses and differences in revenue recognition. Question number 13. Explain risk return trade-off analysis. The answer is. The risk return trade-off asserts that the potential return increases with an enhance in risk. According to the risk return trade-off, spent money can provide higher profits only if the investor will receive a greater chance of losses. Question number 14. Explain acceleration. The answer is. The acceleration clause provides for the creditor to seize the borrower to repay promptly. Normally, 
it will be drafted into the bond indenture that a tenant with a set percentage of total principal is required to force an acceleration. Question number 15. What are the risk included in debt securities? The answer is. Default risk can be described as the chance that an issuer of a bond may be inadequate to make timely repayment of interest or administrator on a debt security or to unless complying with the terms of a bond indenture and is also committed to his credit risk. Question number 16. What do you understand by a benchmark bond? The answer is. A benchmark bond is a conventional type of a bond's risk or return upon which other bonds are regulated. Typically, benchmark bonds are on the run repositories, since these are deemed the most extremely rated in liquid debt. Question number 17. How does the fixed income market operate? The answer is. The bond market shifts when expectations vary about economic increase and inflation. Unlike stocks, whose future profits are anyone's opinion, bonds make fixed payments for a definite period of time. The higher their expectations of inflation, the less they will pay for bonds. Question number 18. What is the most significant role of the Federal Reserve? The answer is. The Federal Reserve in the United States functions as the country's principal bank. The most powerful means the Fed has to manage the monetary system is the selling and buying of the U.S. government protection, which is usually regarded as open market operations. Question number 19. What is a Treasury bill in India? The answer is. T-bills or Treasury bills, which are money market tools, are small term debt instruments published by the Government of India and are directly issued in three tenors, namely, 91 days, 182 days and 364 days. Further, Treasury bills are zero coupon securities and pay no interest. Question number 20. What is voice brokerage? The answer is. Taking out a trade by telephoning a broker, rather than practicing an electronic trading method. Voice broking is common for large volume businesses or those requiring complex instruments. Question number 21. What is reverse repo? The answer is. Reverse repo is a contract in which a security is borrowed with an agreement on the initiation date to replace the security at a higher price on a later date specified in the contract. Question number 22. When does the long position of the dealer will generally make money? The answer is. The long position of the dealer will generally make money under the following conditions. First, the financing costs in the repo markets are relatively low in comparison to the interest income generated by carrying the security. Second, the market value of collateral increases during the term of the repo. Question number 23, how is yield calculated? The answer is. Yield is determined by dividing the dividends or interest earned on a set time either by the amount formerly invested or by its popular price. Question number 24. What does a positive yield curve indicate? The answer is, an upward slanted yield curve is defined by interest rates that are more eminent on long-term debt than on short-term debt. Question number 25. Why do banks practice repos? The answer is, a repurchase agreement, repo, is a kind of short-term financing for dealers in government securities. Repos are typically utilized to increase short-term capital. They are also a popular means of central bank open market transactions. Question number 26. What is repo contract? The answer is. A repurchase agreement, repo, is a short-term secured loan. One party sells securities to another and agrees to repurchase those securities later at a higher price. The securities serve as collateral. The Federal Reserve uses repos and reverse repos to conduct monetary policy. Question number 27. What are the five varieties of bonds? The answer is. There are five principal types of bonds which are. Savings, Treasury, Municipal, Agency, and Corporate. Each kind of bond has several purposes, sellers, buyers, and levels of risk versus return. Question number 28. What is the debt-to-asset ratio method? The answer is. The debt-to-assets ratio formula is estimated by apportioning total liabilities by total assets. The equation is very simple. It measures total debt as a percentage of total assets. Question number 29. How do interdealer brokers earn money? The answer is. The interdealer broker earns its money by practicing a small percentage of every trade as commission. As financial markets grow and developing amounts of trading takes sight electronically, interdealer brokerage firms are also applying electronic systems to broke deals among buyers and sellers. Question number 30. Why bonds are a bad investment? The answer is. Bond funds are subjected to interest rate risk, 
and that risk can be quite meaningful, particularly in a low interest rate setting. When interest rates are at famous lows, they have nowhere to move but up. When rates do fasten up, the net asset assessment of the bond fund can weaken significantly. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel.